Good afternoon. I'm here with Chris Spring, well-known wildlife expert. Uh, we're here to talk about an opportunity for Port Said. So over to you, Chris. Yes, the opportunity is, as most people will know, every year the gangs come out and spray all of what's referred to as weeds. I hate that word weeds, but what's referred to as weeds. And obviously, in windy conditions, as they found, for example, with our friends in Yap, is that when in windy conditions, that spray can literally go everywhere. And you only have to do a quick Google search to realize that some of these chemicals that are being used are not very good for insects. And I would argue if they're not very good for insects, they're also not very good for people. Again, go and Google search it. Go and find out about it, and you'll see the various lawsuits which have taken place across the world. There's an alternative. And what... North Somerset Council have done is offered Portishead Town Council a kind of handout, a trial. And this is the trial. For those of you out there watching this that are of an age like me, you can probably remember your parents and you participating in going outside your garden gate and with a trowel removing the so-called weeds from, for instance, around your walls or around your gate, etc. So we want to encourage that to kind of come back again. Now, I do realise, and everybody else will realise, that there are a section of community that physically can't get out and do that. So what Portishead Town Council have offered to do is to set up a group of volunteers. You phone into the council and a volunteer comes round with a trowel and removes. If you look down here, you'll see some of the things which are already growing here. Now, I know this was this was sprayed last year. Now, if you think... Spraying is the end of it. You can see it's not. It's all basically trying to come back out through. And there are some wonderful plants here. I'll show you. Let's, let's have a look at this. Come and have a look at this one. Let's have a look. So, if you've been to France, you've seen this one everywhere. This is red valerian. Mm-hmm. So, what red valerian is doing at the moment, it's growing. It'll grow out the walls, it'll grow out the tarmac, and it produces a beautiful red or white flower. And that is is very inviting for insects. So you'll get butterflies, bees, flies, the rest of them, desperately trying to pollinate that, desperately trying to get some food from that. You'll also have, as I found in my own road in Northwestern, a butterfly which migrates in from all the way from North Africa called the Painted Lady. And that, I know, is is one of its favorite plants to go to for a very quick feed up. And you can imagine a butterfly flying that distance, the first thing it's gonna need is some energy. So red valerian can be a lifeline, but red valerian can use problems. Now in some areas, it's probably not causing any problem at all, so the best thing to do is just let it alone, like the French do. Mm-hmm. But it might be growing out of the wall, and it mm-hmm. might be destabilizing the wall, and therefore you need to do something about it. So you need to remove it. As I've already said, spraying, well, this has been sprayed. Has it been the answer? No, here it comes again. It's coming back up. So it's something that that even sprayers have to do every year. So with a trowel, you have to do the same thing every year. So there is no difference on it. The only thing is using a trowel, for example, is far safer than spraying everything. We know the sprayings can be quite toxic because you can find, for example, where spraying has taken place. If it's a flower, you'll find bees dead quite close to it. And again, I argue the point that if it ain't no good for bees, it ain't no good for us either. So that's just one plant. And I know that this is, we're down, we're down um, near Nat West Bank. We're looking across to, to Aldi here. And I came and um, identified some of the plants that are growing up here. And I know, for example, one of the plants, it's not exceptionally common, it's not exactly rare, but it's rather special because it comes out in the early summer, unlike its close relative. It's called the Oxford ragwort. And it'll actually grow out, wait for it, I'll, come, here, come and see. I'll show you where it grows from. It is along here, but the special place that it grows out so far, when it grows, nobody's removed it. Can you believe this? Brilliant. Brilliant. It's actually growing out of these steps. <laughs> Fantastic. And when it grows, obviously, it's attracting, again, it's attracting insects. And if it's attracting insects, it will also be attracting birds to feed as well. So if we can, what we can hear behind us, turn around. Yes. Uh, looking at the Nat West bank car park, and you can hear chirping behind me, house sparrows, yeah. red listed species. Yeah. They argue a 70, 75% decline across the whole of the UK. Now, these sparrows can feed on grain and seed material in order to keep themselves going. 
But if they're going to have a good productive season of babies, which they need to do, if they're going to maintain population levels, they need insects. Insects will be around plants. Some of those plants will be in your garden that you grow. And obviously, again, if you look back through here, what you'll see is lots of plants beginning to grow through there. So not just the flower itself, but also the leaf could be covered, for example, in caterpillars. Did you know the average blue tit that's feeding its young can take around 500 to 1,000 wow. caterpillars per day? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, brilliant. So thanks Chris, very much, Chris. So like I said, the, as Chris says, um, the town council is looking for volunteers. So at the end of this video, there'll be uh, an email address that you can email into. And we'll organise some volunteers to um, go on and do some annual weeding in the near future. And I maintain that, that not all of the plants, I'm going to call them flowers, not all of the flowers, let's not call them weeds. Uh, some of them can be very useful to people. There is one in particular which grows very common throughout Portishead, particularly in the uh, tarmac walled environment, and that's called garlic mustard. Yep. Did you know garlic mustard, every bit of that plant can be consumed? Not that you would want to do that near a busy road, unless you washed it, of course, but it's just saying that, that have a look at those plants. What I'm going to do as a backup to this is I'm going to do a survey around Portishead during the summer and start identifying all of the plants that live within the urban environment, those that we refer to as weeds. But what I'm also going to do is not just identify them and give you the information. I'm going to tell you what their uses are for you, because you'll be quite surprised. Some of the plants that we're actually destroying are very good for us. It's fascinating. I think we look forward to that, Chris. I'm sure a lot of us will learn a lot of things. Thanks very much. And Bye again, for now. Again, for everyone, yeah, if you'd like to volunteer, get in touch. Thank you.